In the first century AD, the Via Augusta constituted one of the most important communication systems in the Western Mediterranean. Running from Gades to Rome by Terraconensis and Gaul, it had a length of around 1,500 kilometers and was the longest road in the Iberian Peninsula. It also linked Cadiz with the Pyrenees. The southern part of the Iberian Peninsula and the territory which in many ways was the forerunner of present-day Andalusia was known by the Romans as Baetica. Within this area, the Via Augusta and the River Baetis, today known as the River Guadalquivir, form the principal lines of communication, uniting the four jurisdictional conventus, Cordoba, Cordoba, Hispalis, Seville, Astigi, Ecija, and Gadis, Cadiz. In the words of Pliny, Baetica, named after the river which runs through the middle of it, is privileged in comparison with the other provinces due to its rich appearance and a certain very unique splendor in its fertility. The Roman Baetica route offers a tour of the land which once formed this Roman province. Taking in Santi Ponce, Carmona, La Louisiana, Ecija, Almodovar del Rio, Cordoba, Montoro, Almedinilla, Puente Genil, Osuna, Marchena, Jerez, Cádiz, and Tarifa. As partners, the local councils corresponding to these locations are joined by the provincial governments of Córdoba, Seville and Cádiz, and by the Andalusian Confederation of Entrepreneurs, Confederación de Empresarios de Andalucía. The route includes beauty spots of great geographical and natural interest, such as the Sabetica Natural Park in Córdoba, the Campiño or Fertile Plain, the Guadalquivir Valley and the Bahia de Cadiz Natural Park. Strabo, a Roman geographer from the first century BC, mentions in his works that the banks of the Baetis are the most densely populated. All the land, including both the riverside land and the small islands in the river, are cultivated with painstaking care. The region is wooded and has plantations of all types, which are admirably looked after. The Via Augusta dates from before the reign of the Emperor Augustus, but it bears his name in recognition of the reform and improvements he carried out on it. Augustus systematized and organized communications along military lines, establishing post houses every so many miles and regulating chains of draft animals. Roman roads were marked with miliaria, columns bearing information for travelers such as the distance to the next stop. In this respect, they were similar to modern traffic signs. These milestones sometimes bore the name of the emperor or of the benefactor who had financed the road carved into their stone. Consiguieron la monumentalización de la vía a lo largo de su recorrido. Bridges and gateways to cities endowed the road with a monumental appearance along its whole length and symbolized the power of the empire. Resting and reprovisioning infrastructures soon sprang up alongside the Via Augusta. 
Travelers on journeys taking several days stop to eat and rest in the roadside lodges and change draft animals in places known as mutaciones. In the case of the Via Augusta in its passage through Baetica, we know the names of the cities, lodges and stopping points thanks to what have become known as the Vicarello Goblets. These are four silver goblets engraved with a list of all the cities between Cadiz and Rome and the distance in miles between each one. They appeared in 1852 in a spa resort near Rome on the site of an old shrine. ...en una localidad termal cerca de Roma, donde existió un santuario. Some researchers believe the goblets must have been manufactured in Cadiz and taken to Rome by someone from Baetica, traveling along the Via Augusta as a pilgrimage. The goblets would have constituted the final offering to Apollo once he had arrived in Rome. Other documents which provide us with information about the Via Augusta are the Antonine itinerary, Putinger's chart and an anonymous work from Ravenna. Before projecting a new roadway, the Roman engineers used to carry out a preliminary study in which a series of actions had to be performed. They had to establish one or more master accesses, calculate distances, analyze the potential difficulties that could be caused by the relief of the land, and decide on the techniques to be used to overcome them. In river valleys, the roads were built close to the river and followed its course, while over the rest of the route, the engineers looked for the gentlest slopes, even when this implied making the road longer. To project the road, instruments were used, such as the groma, to draw perpendicular lines and the corobate, which bore a certain resemblance to today's spirit level. Bridges and buildings were connected to Roman roads through complex hoisting systems employing multiple pulleys called orbiculus and load-bearing tripods known as recamum. The tools used by the quarry workers were similar to those used today. To build the road surface itself, and particularly when the road was to be a major communications thoroughfare, a trench was first dug all along the proposed route. This was always wider than the intended width of the road, and was filled in with clay and stones to create a level base layer for the surface paving following the relief of the terrain. Above this large stone, slabs were dry laid one next to the other. At this point, the stone to be used to delimit the road service and mark its edge was laid. Ashlar or rubble was usually employed for this purpose. Finally, the surface was leveled and any holes were filled in with small stones or even fragments of ceramics. A layer of lime was spread over the surface, sometimes mixed with gravel, to ease the passage of travelers and vehicles and enable them to move faster. For less important roads, simple layers of flattened earth or exposed natural rock were used. At its point of entry into Carmona, the Via Augusta was covered with flattened albero, a type of sandy soil. It was six and a half meters wide to allow the passage of at least two carts. People and goods were transported using several different types of cart drawn by horses or mules. Exceptionally, oxen and donkeys were used. There is evidence that light two-wheel carts known as Sisium or Carpetum existed along with four-wheel vehicles which not only transported travelers but were also used on long journeys such as those used by the Corsus Publicus. 
the state finance transport system for people and goods. The imperial post could cover between 70 and 75 kilometers per day, which makes it comparable to the efficiency of our own postal service by modern standards. The cart was driven by a state-employed driver who took the passengers and goods as far as the next stop and then returned to his point of departure. He had an escort of soldiers to guarantee his safety and sometimes even carried imperial luggage. From the time of Hadrian onwards, a prefect responsible for vehicles looked after discipline in the service, the state of the roads, bridges and lodges, and made sure that everything ran smoothly. Caesar is known to have travelled over 150 kilometres per day by two-wheeled Sisium, and news of the death of Nero took six days to arrive in Hispania. We also know that a traveller on foot could walk around 26 or 27 miles per day, that's around 40 kilometres. The Via Gusta not only transported merchandise, but also ideas. The great influence exerted by citizens from Baetica in Rome was by no means coincidental. Marcus Ulpius Trianus, later known as Trajan, was born into an aristocratic family in Italica, and the Emperor Hadrian, although born in Rome, spent part of his youth in Italica and was considered Baeticus by adoption. The full name of Lucius Junius Moderatus Columea comprised his prinomen, his nomen and two cognomen. The prinomen was his personal name and the nomen was his family name which identified him as one of the Gwens Iunia associated with Cadiz. The first of the two cognomen, Moderatus, was fairly common throughout the empire and the second, Columea, is either a diminutive form of columna or it stems from a term meaning fang or incisor. This Cadiz-born nobleman was born at around the time of Christ and wrote several agricultural treatises. In Rome he befriended the Annius family, one of whose members was Lucius Annius Seneca. The latter was born in 4 BC and briefly studied grammar and rhetoric in Rome before focusing his attention on philosophy. The son of the orator Marcus Annius, Seneca, was a Roman philosopher well known for the moralistic nature of his works. The journey along the Roman Baetica route will take us to the archaeological complex of Italica, the home of the Hispania-born Roman emperors. The necropolis at Carmona, containing the spectacular tombs of Servilia and the elephant. The outstanding mosaics depicting the entourage of Bacchus and the punishment of Dirce in Ethiha. The river Guadalquivir at the point where it flows through Almodovar del Rio, its numerous meanders slicing through a landscape of great scenic and ecological value. In Montoro, a beautifully crafted Torracata sculpture.
the Roman bridge, the city wall and the palace complex of Circadias in Cordoba. The Roman Villa, known as the Ring, in Spanish El Redo in Almedania, with its enigmatic bronze sculpture of the god Hypnos. The late Roman period necropolis of Asuna, where one of the caves still conserves its decorative wall paintings. the area around Marchena. And the Casa del Obispo or Bishop's House in Cadiz, a site which displays evidence of an uninterrupted historical continuity dating back to the 7th century BC. Apart from the Roman sites and remains, the villages along the Roman Biatica route offer fine Andalusian cuisine quality accommodation and the opportunity to participate in complementary activities which will undoubtedly enhance your enjoyment of this route. The Roman Biatica route invites you to tour the historical heritage of the cities through which it passes. To enjoy natural sites of great geographical and natural interest. Gastronomy, crafts and festivals. to wander through the streets and meet the local people and to discover the customs and curiosities of 14 cities united by what in Roman times was called the Via Augusta.